Hi everyone, we are back and we are about to go through our exam two solutions. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna pull up Mathematica. Um, we have our coordinate system here. We also have our material, which is a polymer, a polymer purple material. So rigid on the sides, um, rigid and it's attached. Um, in this face here and here, they are open. Um, so let's go ahead. We have B Young's modulus equals one times 10 to the ninth. For polymer, nu is equal to 0 0.4. What else do we have here? Um, thermal expansion coefficient. So alpha is equal to 70 times 10 to the minus seven. Temperatures increase from room temp. So del T is final, which is 80 minus initial 25, good. Final length of the 3-3 three, three direction is nine. So E3-3 three, three is equal to final, which is nine times 10 to the minus three, minus initial, which is 10 times 10 to the minus three divided by 10 times 10 to the minus three. Good. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent. So what are the stresses that are gonna exist here? Let's go ahead and let's write them out. So in this problem, there's definitely a stress in the 3, 3. There's definitely a stress in the 2, 2 because as I push down, as my polymer wants to expand, it wants to push out here. It wants to expand out, but we are basically putting a restoring force from the walls as such here. So there will be a stress in the 2, 2, but in the 1, 0, 0, it's open. So it's just gonna be able to pop out here. So there'll be no stress here. There will be a strain no strain here, and there will be strain in the three, three, and we, actually we've already calculated it. So we're just solving for one, two, three, and we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and start to solve. So I'm gonna E1 is equal to one divided by Y times sig one, one. Oops, actually let's define, we said that there will be no sig one, one equals zero. Um, there will be no E2, two, two is gonna be equal to zero. So, E1 is equal to um, E11, which is double equal to, we well, don't know if that, times sig11, minus a new times sig22, plus sig33, and then uh, plus, I'm going to call this ET, phonome ET, alpha times delta T. Oops. There we go. ET, good. So we can see that value here. So let's go ahead, boom, boom. So we're just gonna need two, change this to two, two, change this to two, two, change this to one, one. And then finally three, three. And then three, three. And then one, one. So let's go ahead and solve. E1, E2, E3. I don't even know what the question is asking me, but I know I'm going to have to get those values anyways. Ah, shoot. I need to redefine this. So let's reevaluate uh, everything here. Shift enter. Shift enter. If, you're, if you have issues, just quit the kernel and start again. Um, but we should be able to solve this. There you go. So we've got our values for... And it makes sense, right? The stress should be compressed from the 2-2. Good. Press from here. There should be expanding out. So we've got it. Fantastic. What is the final... Okay, so we've got the stress and strain tensors. We've got those values. What is the final length in the 1-1 direction? Ooh, good question. So that's going to be... We're going to set this equal to... Solve. Our strain is going to be equal to... Uh, LF minus our initial, which is 10 times 10 to the minus three, all that divided by 10 times 10 to the minus three, because it's a cube. And that'll be our final length. Got it. Um, let's answer, what is the rotation to get to principal stress? Um, in this problem, it's zero because we don't have any shear stress. And actually we're in plane stress, the two, three plane. What about maximum shear? That's gonna be a 45 degree rotation. Uh, what are the respective values? So let's go ahead and actually, let's define this out. So we have, both of these are negative. So my sig one is gonna be equal to zero. 
my sig2 is going to be my next positive, or my next most positive one. So since that's very negative, so that's going to be sig2 here. And sig3 will be this one. If I'm talking about the 2, 3 plane, I'm just going to do... Um, I'm going to do sig, um, sig2 minus sig3. I'm going to do divided by 2. Uh, that's not good. I was wondering, I was like, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be negative, divided by two. So this will be my maximum shear stress. So we've defined what are the principal stress values there, sig one, sig two, sig three. We've already defined what if we're in plane stress, so we're good there. If the material is the red material, um, will it yield via Rankine, Tresca, or Von Mises? So sig one, uh, and actually this is the issue when you're kind of, um, when you're looking at yield criteria um, in terms of, you know, tension um, and some of those values. So you can look for magnitude here. So I would say is sig three or absolute value of sig three, is it greater than um, our 10 times 10 to the six? Yes, in that case it will yield. Um, but again, if you're looking just for tension, um, you can kind of get a little bit tossed or you could get a little bit confused essentially with, um, with some of these metrics. So if you're just looking at zero, it would be, uh, that value. So sig one minus sig three, is it greater than 10 times 10 to the six? Uh, yes, indeed it is. And then we could have von Mises, which is going to be square root of, of one half times sig one minus sig two square plus sig two minus sig three square plus sig uh, one minus sig three squared. And is that greater than, let's say 10 times 10 to the six. Yield, 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 um, except for ranking because that would miss the boat altogether. Um, got it, all right. Turns out the walls were not entirely frictionless, um, and the engineering string was measured such that. Um, so let's go ahead and solve 0 0.018 times 10 to the minus 2 because it's in percent, set equal to 1 over y, um, which is going to give me uh, basically 1 plus nu times sig 2, 3. So we now have this sig 2, 3 here. So my sig two three is equal to this. And then let's go ahead and define our sig two two. Let's pull this out here. So I'm gonna find our sig two two is equal to this. And our sig three three is equal to this. So we have, um, we do have, plane stress in 2, 3. We are not in principal stress anymore. So sig 2, 2, sig 3, 3, sig 2, 3. And then now we're going to have to pull out, let's look at our more, more transformations. So we pull out this old notebook and we're going to pull out our transformation matrix here. And if I want to find the rotation now to principal stress, go here, I go here, and I'm going to do T dot P23, and I am going to solve, when does this equal zero in terms of theta? Solve that numerically, and we can see our rotations to get to, to, get to uh, principal stress. There you go, we got it. So that's all we have. That's it for problem one. So not too bad, hopefully. Oh, I'm frozen. Um, so yeah, that was all, I'm gonna make sure. So now we're gonna get into problem two, which is our good old friend beam bending. So we'll see you then. Thanks, bye.